Hi everybody. I'm going to get right on going this morning because I've got a lot to cover in this video. It's a very um, in-demand uh, set of questions that we've gotten at the Academy. I'd say the last, you know, um, six months or so, and I finally took some time out to, to prepare something uh, for you all. What I'm going to cover today is going to consist of all the questions that you all have. Should I pick AHEMA or AAPC and what credential um, should I start with and what credential should I seek after um, the initial credential? Okay, so we, um, we start with AAPC. There's two major organizations in the industry. I mean, there are more organizations than just the two, but the ones that um, that where the where the board exams offered through the organizations seem to hold a lot a lot of water um, are what we call AAPC and AHEMA. Uh, AAPC requires that the member pay a yearly fee of one hundred and sixty dollars. You basically have to pay that once a year every year. As opposed to AHEMA, they have brand new, very first time becoming a member of AHEMA, then the, the charge is seventy nine dollars. Um, and then I believe it lifts to $135 a year after your initial year. Um, last I researched on their website, you know, and, and unfortunately the numbers or, you know, that we go over today, they're possible. It's possibility that they can change just because, you know, things are ever changing. So, you know, after, even after you watch this video, it's not a bad idea to go back through and do some research on, on their websites. After, um, AAPC and AHEMA, um, AAPC doesn't offer degreed programs, only AHIMA does. Um, and the AHIMA offers a two year degree. It's called RIT, R H I T. Um, it stands for Health Information Technician. Uh, and it's a two year associate's degree. Um, these technicians, they ensure the quality of medical records, they assist in um, carrying out proper disposal and disclosures of, of PHI, they oversee storage of physical and, and electronic records. Um, you know, and, and they do this all while following and applying federal, state, and, um, age, you know, accrediting agency uh, requirements. Um, you know, I was really disheartened because when I went to research this um, a few weeks ago, you know, just in terms of their of, of income, I, you can't believe everything on the internet, but, you know, so I highly, you know, recommend you do your own research if the writ is what you're wanting to, to seek, but... I kept finding that the median pay um, out there was about thirty-seven thousand dollars a year. Um, you know, and that equivalents to about seventeen dollars eighty-three, eighty-four cents. You know, an hour, and I was just shocked to see that. So, you know, I get the question all the time. You know, should I should I do a, a, a two-year degree, a four-year degree, or just go after the go go after the alphabet soup in terms of credentialing, and uh, and that just if 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 what I saw on the internet is accurate, it confirms it to me that if that's all you're going to be earning, then my goodness, get after the alphabet soup. Now that is not the same. Um, um, the research with the research I was conducting on the four-year bachelor's degree called the RIA, the Registered Health Information Administrator. Um, those are your managers. Those are your directors um, at a HIMS department, um, electron or excuse me, the health information management department. Which is where the coders and billers tend to tend to work, auditors as well. Um, now they, you know, they have they're all over the map. I mean, the on the, the internet, I found that they can earn from sixty thousand all the way to eighty thousand. Um, you know, and and what you're doing is you are managing uh, the coders, the billers, the auditors. Um, although I've seen plenty and plenty of job descriptions on the internet um, that that don't even require that four-year degree. You simply move up the ladder, you know, through, again, through your alphabet soup, um, seniority, um, experience, things like that. So there's still that possibility. Um, you know, so this is uh, both the RIT and the RIA are super expensive um, you know, education. Um, you're you're talking about you know twenty nine, thirty thousand dollars all the way up to a hundred thousand dollars. You know, if not more, depending on you know what college you attend. Um, but it can it can it can be a lot of money. So um, anyway, I I know some um, I have some colleagues myself that they are RITs or they are RIAs, and and they have often told me you know yeah the RIT I mean the RIA actually that was the RIA um, the RIA you know earned me a spot in managing, but really 
you know, I've had my fill in managing and I've done it for, you know, five years, 10 years, and I am just so tired of having to manage. And so now I, st I strictly do medical coding um, and billing and I make, you know, twice the amount of money, you know, um, you know, be because I, I no longer manage. Um, now above that, you've got, um, and, and again, I don't want to deter you away from any degrees because if your passion is to manage, it's all about what your passion is because you got to, we spend way too much guys at work and, and, and we got to love what we do is, is the, is the, is the end game here. So, um, you know, you really need to do what's in your heart, no matter what you see in this video or anybody else's video. Um, because of the, because of that right there, that point right there, which is, you know, we spend way, way, way too much at work. We better be happy at work doing what we're doing. Other than that, you've got your, then you've got your MHA, your master's healthcare administration degree. These are the people that run a hospital. They've got a master's in healthcare administration. These are your CCO, your, your sorry, your CCOO, CEOs. Um, and, and, you know, they're, now there's been a there over the years, golly, I think since the ninety eighties, nineties, um, it was just a saturation um with this degree in there. So when it comes down to it, these people that are that are um placed in the CEO and COO positions, they're really um they're really they really go off experienced and, and seniority. Um and it's 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 experience and seniority um is what sets the candidates apart. Um but and you know there are several types of masters um, in healthcare. You got your MBA, you got your 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 science in healthcare, um, and, and the list goes on. I mean, I don't want to turn this video into that, but um, I want to move into the alphabet soup. I and mean, you hear me talk about this all the time in my videos. Go after the alphabet soup. Um, if what you're in love with is medical coding, auditing, and if you want to make an amazing amount of money. <laughs> so, um, so let's get into board exam um, certifications or credentials. So there are, I want to really, really um, stop the chaos out there as best as I possibly can uh, because apparently there are a lot of educators on the internet that have put it in your minds that you have got to have, um, um, you know, two years, three years, four years of experience, you know, you've got to have, um, you know, a degree before you can even sit for this type of exam. As far as I know, the phone calls I've made to both AAPC and AHIMA, and plus what I've seen on their websites, there are no real prerequisites. The way it, it, it turned, well, there's a few prerequisites with the AHIMA side, and we'll talk about those, but most definitely not with any of the board exams, uh, medical coding board exams with AAPC. Absolutely no prerequisites. The, I mean, what it dwindles down to is if you've got... Um, if you've got um, if the finance or the financial means to pay for the board exam, um, then you can um, and you can prove you know your proficiency on a board exam. Then you can pass it and be board certified, um, and and it's national. So you know no matter what state you move to, it's going to um, hold water. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing that it's a national board exam. Um, all of them are are national board exams through the AAPC. People that don't. Um, have time, to, or let's say they, they don't have time or they just don't want to put in all the time, all the additional extra time for the additional um, courses, um, you know, that you're going to learn about. You know, when I say other additional courses, I'm talking about subject matters that you are going to learn about anyway on the first week, first two months of your job. If you're not interested in, in having to learn all these other subjects and topics out there um, that you were gonna learn anyway while on the job without really breaking into a sweat, um, then, then what people are doing is they're skipping um, these, these, these four-month online programs, six-month online programs, 10-month um, vocational colleges, um, and they are taking, you know, these these um, accelerated type programs, um, and and they have um, they range from, you know, um, four week courses, six week courses. Now in those four week, six week courses, you're meeting, I believe, every Saturday, once a week, every week. Um, you get sent home to do homework, and then you come back and meet again. There's a lot of that going on, um, uh, you know, but. And that's all fine and dandy, and I hope I hope those programs are working out there. I know that um, there's been a lot of bad luck um, in, within the state of Texas because 
um, you know, I get those students. Though so they already went to that that four week, six week um, program in classroom program with with the teacher that they found um, on the AAPC website and still had really really bad turnout. Um, you know, so again, I can't say that that's been happening all over the nation because I don't, I can't, I, I, I'm not, I haven't been there years and long enough, um, but I have been in Texas for forever. So um, I haven't to this moment, you know, heard um, some really fabulous results from the four week, six week courses. Um, in classroom courses, you've got to be careful is what I'm trying to tell you. You've got to be careful and like I say in all my videos, get in front of your teacher. Make sure that they truly have a passion for it, that they really um, have, um, that they really do care that the student, you know, um, flourishes in this in this industry and passes that board exam. It's the biggest complaint I hear was, you know, I went to this four week, six week in classroom course, but the teacher, you know, was, we're not here to pass the board exam. We're here to teach you the basics. And then the student's like, what? I didn't sign up for this. You know, so some pretty bad horror stories that I hear. Um, you know, and I used to myself. My course used to be a six-week in-classroom course, um, but but I had to to rewrite the curriculum and make it a three-day consecutive. It's still the same amount of hours that it used to be when it was a six-week every Saturday. You know, um, you know, but but I had to I had to make it into three days, consecutive days, so that I could travel it uh, throughout the nation and help other people outside of Dallas Fort Worth. Um, and it's been working, working magical. I should have done that from the get-go, to be honest with you, because it's been easier um, at, on us, the instructors, and on the students, and that's the bigger thing. Um, so let's see. And I say that because life gets in the way. You know, you, you, you sign up for a six-week program, and you're all on fire today and next Saturday, and then on the third Saturday, the, the, the child gets sick, and, there's, and you're going to miss class, and it's a disaster. So, and now it's just, you, you take a lot less risk in a three-day because it's consecutive like that. Um, so, anyway, um, my course, as you all know, my, my, my big, my, the biggest course I have right now is the CPC. That's the one I travel the nation with, and that's the one we took the show on the road with because it was the most frequently one called about. Everybody wanted that credential. So that's the one that we, we now travel the nation with. Now we travel with a couple of more and we'll talk about that, but hang in there. Um, <clears throat> so um, the CPC understand is the same thing as a CPCA. And what I mean by that is it's the same exact exam. Don't expect to get on the AAPC.com website and, and try to find the CPCA exam. No, it's the CPC exam. Sit for that. But when you get your, your, your certificate in the mail having passed it, it's not going to say CPC on it. It's going to say Certified Professional Coder Apprentice A. I'd like to call that A, uh, the scarlet letter A. Um, you know, it says, "Hi, everybody. I um, I am, I am definitely have mastered on the on the board exam that I I am. Uh, I know my medical coding guidelines, but I'm a newbie. You know, and that's what the CPCA does. It's still the same exact exam, but you get an A back there, back behind your acronym for about two years." Um, until after you've proven in the industry um, that you've worked as an as actual medical coder in the industry, then you can write the AAPC, have your employer write the AAPC that, that you have definitely worked as a coder, and then the AAPC will send you a brand new certificate without the A on it. Um, and now you're just CPC. So, you know, these CPCAs, um, CPCs just as well, you can work at a doctor's office, you can work um, at a clinic over in the professional buildings, um, right attached to a hospital. You can work at an ambulatory, you know, surgical center, at these er emergent, urgent care, freestanding facilities, um, at a freestanding radiological facility, anything like that. You're, what you're doing is you, are, you have learned and mastered the medical coding guidelines on how to um, how to bill and code for um, physicians, the providers. CPC stands for Certified Professional Coder. Um, it's the it's the it's the one one guys that that test you on every topic under the sun, and that is why the CPC exam. And I think every educator out there will be with me on this. Um, they all state the CPC, although it's the standard, it's the it's where you start of a credential. It is a beast of an exam. 
again, until you take my course. <laughs> um, but it is a beast because, you know, even if you are just coding OB-GYN or just coding cardiovascular right now, and you go in to, to sit for the CPC because you think you're just a really hot coder, and you are in those realms, in, in cardiovascular or OB-GYN, you will go in there and fall on your face um, with, the, with the CPC board exam because all of a sudden you find out you're, you, you've got to know how to code the integumentary system, the bones, the muscles, the, um, the eyes, the ears, the nervous system, the endocrine, I mean, it's a beast of an exam, and it's lengthy stories and, and in-depth, really thought-provoking, you know, process-type questions. So, um, you know, but it's nothing no one can handle. Um, it's everyone I've ever taught, even people that, that had no experience, never went to any kind of medical billing and coding school. Um, in fact, they have a background in, um, in banking. They come to my course and they catch on. They learn. So it all depends on the teacher and their ability to break the material down. Um, so in the CPC board exam, there's 150 multiple choice questions. Uh, the cost out there right now, the going cost is $380. They do give you two tries to take it, um, and when you become a student of Medical Coding Academy, we do offer you a student discount code, so make sure you ask us for that, and that'll knock off $60 from your um, exam. It is um, the books that you will need, and with 60, I believe, yeah, that knocks it down to 320 for the actual exam. The, the, the books that you will need are the CPT Professional not the standard, okay? Don't make that mistake. The CPT professional, it's got to have the spiral on it. It's written by the AMA, um, the ICD-10-CM, um, and it can be any publisher. It can be AAPC, it can be AHIMA, it can be PMIC, um, it can be Carol Buck, um, any, really any publisher. Um, if you're really shaking in your knees, then ask, you know, Medical Coding Academy, is this a good book? But try to stick to the ones I've named, um, they're the most frequently used anyway, um, and, and I've seen them all, and they're all um, user-friendly. So, um, let's see. The, so those are the books. Um, it's going to have 150 questions, and it's going to be testing you on topics like um, E&M, anesthesia, radiology, pathology, laboratory, medicine, um, and then it's going to have 60 surgery questions. Um, and when I say surgery, I mean those are the body systems, you know, what, what, what we were stating earlier, the integumentary, the muscles, the bones, and so forth. Um, there's also going to be between 25, 28 non-coding questions, things that test you um, on, on uh, such matters of, of compliance and um, Medicare, um, you know, uh, medical terminology, anatomy and physiology. Um, now, please don't go and leave this video and go and sign on with a big community college for a medical terminology, anatomy, and physiology type of course because you figure for yourself that, you know, you, you don't even have a chance in my classroom unless you've got all that mastered. That is the biggest lie out there right now for outpatient medical coders. If you are doing inpatient, then I am not saying that at all. For inpatient, you need a, a good, strong foundation of medical terminology, anatomy, and physiology. But, you know, for outpatient, it, it is not necessary. The doctors are going to give you the words. They're going to be spelled correctly. And as long as you can use a Webster's Dictionary, um, if I were to tell you right now, hey, go to the Webster's Dictionary and look up the word house, would you be able to do that? Absolutely, right? Because you go to the H's and then down to house and there's the definition. All right, well, that's the same thing with medical coding. So the doctors are going to hand you the words um, spelled correctly. And as long as you can pick out the word from the paragraph, couple of paragraphs or report, um, you know, then then you'll be able to to find the code for it without ever having to know what it meant. So I, I'm really over people going and spending a ton of money or even these colleges. You went through college and all you learned was medical terminology, A and P. Um, so please catch my video on breaking the silence of anatomy and physiology out there to hear more about that. But guys, you know, when you're, when, if a patient comes in, you know, complaining of, of, of pain and maybe even a rash and the doctor diagnoses them with polychondritis, um, if I were to ask you right now in that statement, what's wrong with your patient, um, you know, and I'm not asking you to define 
what's wrong with your patient. I'm telling you which words of the word that I just used is wrong with your patient. You're going to say polychondritis. And you know what? Do you know what polychondritis means? No, you don't. Most of you watching right now have a clue what it means, you know, but guess what? You can go to the P's in the alphabetical index of the, of the, of the code book, find the word, and it's going to give you the code. And you never had to know what it meant. In other words, guys, it's always when you're reading an operative report or a paragraph or a couple of paragraphs and you're trying to figure out, hmm, what's wrong with my patient? That's all you ask yourself the entire time you're reading through, what's wrong with my patient? You are going to be able to pick out the word polychondritis and you want to know why? Because it's always the weird word. It's the weird word. That's what's wrong with your patient. <laughs> okay, so I hope to God I hit home on that because I cannot keep stating that or my staff is getting exhausted on having to explain to you all every single caller Please, you know, it's common sense, folks. It really is. Think about what I just said. Let, let it sink in. I'm sorry, and it's not even your fault. In fact, if anything, I call you a victim because it's been so, um, it's so inundated and so, f uh, so you're, like, for lack of a better word, you all have been so brainwashed because there are so many um, educators out there um, completely, completely saying the exact opposite of what I am saying. And I'm sorry, but I'm saying the truth. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. So the books that you're going to need for the CCSP uh, will consist of the CPT, again, through the AMA professional version, um, the ICD-10-CM, and Hicks Level 2. Um, you know, the coding aspect of the CCSP board exam will feel a lot like, you know, the, that, uh, that of the CPC. Um, so it's, uh, it's not where, as long as you've taken my CPC course, you're not going to have difficulty answering the coding scenarios um, on the CCSP exam. What gets people is the non-coding scenarios, things like, you know, the, the data quality questions, the community, uh, co communication, excuse me, um, questions, um, um, technology questions, privacy, confidentiality, legal, ethical issues. Um, you know, the health information documentation, all the non-coding questions is why I, you know, highly recommend that my students take the course because you're going to need some pretty, um, pretty uh, in-depth lectures on those topics in order to have um, a shot at passing this board exam. So um, now when it comes to requirements from the, from AHIMA, um, I searched and searched, and it was recent, I think maybe not even six day, days ago, and what I found with AHIMA, what I concluded, because their website is a little vague sometimes, um, you know, is that in order to sit for the CCSP exam, you've got to already have a RIA degree, a RIT degree, or the CCS coding cr um, credential through them, or you can... Um, you will you 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 could have completed a actual coding program from anywhere, even mine, um, and, and along with two years of coding experience before you can sit for this exam. Um, or the um, or you have you if you have the CCA credential through them plus one year of actual coding experience, you can sit for this exam. And then lastly, if you have um, any credential from AAPC, so um, even the CPC, you know, then you are, at, um, along with one year of actual coding experience, then you can sit for the CCSP. So I'm, I just don't want to accept that they really mean that. Um, so I highly recommend that anyone interested in going down the road of AHIMA versus AAPC, um, that you get on the phone and you ask them directly, ask one of the customer service, um, you know, uh, people directly, is there any way if I just have money to pay for this exam and I've taken, I, I feel I'm qualified to sit for this exam because I've, I've been preparing for it, whether I took a course or not, can I just go out and sit for this exam or do I really have to have um, you know, follow one of those prerequisites that are listed on the website and just gain clarification straight from the horse's mouth, um, you know, on, on this because, um, 
man, that's just a Debbie Downer if you do have to have, you know, one or the other type of prerequisites. So moving on, we're going to move on to this to the COC through AAPC. That's the Certified Outpatient Coder um, credential, and um, it is it is you know it allows coders to be able to do coding and billing um, in the outpatient wings of the hospitals, not inpatient, outpatient. Um, it covers 150 multiple choice questions. Um, you the cost I, I fee is $380, or or with a discount 320. You do get two tries. Not that you'll need the second one after my course. Um, you know, it's the same books, the CPT, the ICD-10-CM, the HICS-PIX um, book, and um, the neat thing about this board exam is that they do allow a medical dictionary um, into the actual testing unit. Um, there is um, twice the amount of medical terminology questions, twice the amount of anatomy and physiology. Um, the HICS-PIX questions are doubled. Um, and the, the ICD-10-CM are actually tripled. So you get 10 questions on the CPC and 30 on the COC regarding ICD-10-CM. Um, and that, that's all, you know, something that is, is not an issue um, whatsoever um, as long as you take the, the COC prep course with, with the Medical Coding Academy. Um, you're going to need some pretty pretty in-depth scenarios regarding um, in-depth lectures. Pardon me, regarding um, compliance once again because that's tested really big on on this board exam. Um, so was coding guidelines. So are payment methodologies. Good in-depth questions there. Um, you know, and I do want to I do want to point out that the actual um, ICD ten CM and CPT coding questions, mostly CPT, are very very in depth. The stories here in this board exam are much much longer. Um, I remember when I sat for this exam, it was like a page, a, the whole page would be for one question. Um, so lots lots of of scenarios like that, um, along with a ton of multiple codes within your multiple coding options, um, you know, way more so than the CPC board exam. So it's a higher level of a credential, um, and, it, and it's, it's definitely one that's very well respected in the industry. The best or the closest or the most equivalent, I should say, to the COC through AHIMA is called CCA, and that stands for Certified Coding Associate. That would be um, ICD-10 PCS, uh, CPT and ICD-10 CM. There is no Hicks Picks uh, coding questions on this particular exam that um, times you for two hours. Um, you know, this is this is your your entry level um, of 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 the CCS board exam. Your entry level um, C. It, it, you know. It's your mini-me, for lack of a better word, if you will. Um, it's your mini-me CCS. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's inexpensive. It's actually affordable at, uh, um, at $199. If you're a non-member, it's $299. Um, that you, you get 100, 100 multiple choice questions, um, and, and, it's, and it's a time test as well. You only get two hours to complete it. Uh, once again, you've got to score um, at least 300 out of the 400 um, in order to pass this board exam, and the results are immediate. So the wonderful thing about a HEMA board exams is that you can hit submit when you're done taking the test, and then um, get up from your seat, walk over to the front desk, and retrieve your grade right then and there from the employee um, working at the front desk. So uh, really, really fantastic thing how they do that. Um, the coding feels um, a lot like the like the CPC once again, um, you know, and and until you make it to the cases, basically towards the back, um, where it involves a lot of a lot of PCS um, procedural coding, um, you know, for the inpatient facility. So this I, I call this CCA a mini CCS because it tests you outpatient and inpatient, um, and and you really don't. The inpatient credential um, right now, anyway, through AHIMA is CCS and through AAPC is CIC. We'll talk about that here in a moment. But um, you, um, you know, you've got to you've got to know PCS for the CCA um, credential. So, and this is why I highly recommend taking the course through the academy because you're going to need to know that um, in a very in-depth um, format in order to have a chance at passing this board exam. Um, the requirements for this exam, though, I mean, this is why I say call them on the phone because I feel like sometimes on their website, is it just not updated or what, you know? 
so please call them. But all I found for the CCA um, was a high school diploma requirement. That's it. Um, no one year experience, no you know coding program here or coding school there. So I, I would really double check with them and, and uh, because I just can't seem to calculate in my mind how do they require just a high school diploma for something as complex coding as PCS is um, and then and then um, um, it, it, there's that's all you need is, is a high school diploma for something as complex of coding as PCS can be. So um, that's why I would like you all to verify it with an actual rep from AHIMA. Um, anyway, you know, outside of the coding questions on this board exam, you're going to get questions regarding health records, um, data, content. You'll see a lot of communication technology questions, reimbursement methodologies, confidentially, confidentiality and privacy type questions. Um, once again, compliance and health information documentation. So all those topics need to be covered most definitely in a really great course um, and we highly recommend ours. There is a board exam. It's called Certified Professional Auditor. This is 150 multiple choice questions. It's five hours and 40 minutes. You do get two tries. The wonderful thing about AAPC is that they give you two tries. Not that you'll need the second, but it's nice just to have that as, as a um, as a uh, you know, so that it can be, bring peace to you. Um, but you book the books that you would need for this board exam would consist of the CPT, uh, the ICD 10 CM, and once again, the Hicks Picks level two. Um, there's going to be about 100, 100 questions that are going to test you on the medical record, uh, medical record quality, uh, medical record, pardon me, medical records, and then quality assurance, um, also compliance, um, reimbursement method. Uh, or methods, methodology, um, risk analysis type questions. Um, so, and these are these are tough. These questions right here are tough. You, I don't know how you could ever possibly pass a CPMA unless you are an actual auditor right now and you've been doing it for a living for a long time. Could you have a chance at passing this board exam without an official course? Um, so. Um, that's already hard as it is, and that's the majority of what I call that, that exam. And then towards the back of the exam, you have about 20, um, 25, 26 cases um, on, on testing you on can you really audit. Um, so it is definitely um, question after question, um, you know, having this, the tester prove their proficiency um, in auditing skills. So, you know, it's, it's a tough, tough test. It's one to definitely be respected. And another level of medical coding um, um, is now auditing. Now you're looking at other people's codes and seeing what they did wrong and deciphering, you know, is there really an issue here and then how to rectify those issues. Um, you know, um, and then what else? Um, they, these auditors can work over at the health insurance company. They can work um, as a rec auditor through Medicare or even at the OIG. So it is, this is, we're talking some great money here, folks. Okay, we're, we're talking, you know, there's always a base salary, maybe $60,000, but you can get up into the six figures in very, very um, short time span because there's commission on these um, type jobs, you know, for every little mistake that you find, you've you've earned yourself a commission. So, you know, it's really, really an amazing level of, of medical coding called auditing. Then we have the CIC through AAPC. It's called Certified Inpatient Coder. This is new, not that new anymore. I'm going on two years now, um, but but they they came up with their with the inpatient coding credential through the AAPC. Um, at last, and um, this is where the coders and billers are billing for overnight stays um, over at the hospital or facility. Um, you're charging, you're billing, and you're doing coding for the room, the bed, the lights, the equipment that it took to to take care of the patients, um, and all the ancillary services, the nursing services that came into play while taking care of the patient um, in an inpatient status. Um, um, there's going to be about 170 total questions um, on this board exam. You do get two tries. Uh, the fee is $380 um, or $320 with our discount. Um, there is no CPT coding on this board exam. There is no Hicks Picks coding on this board exam. 
you simply need the IECD 10 CM and the IECD 10 PCS. Um, there are such topics being tested that um, encompass things like anatomy and physiology, compliance, medical terminology, um, payer regulatory uh, requirement type questions, um, payment methodologies again, sorry um, if I repeated that, um, medical records, um, the documentation of medical records, um, and then of course medical coding guidelines. Um, you will see about 60 multiple choice uh, questions and then 10 um, cases where it's fill in the blank. But now understand that the, the, the fill in the blank section, you say, but it's only 10 of them. No, it's 10 cases, but within the 10 cases, you're going to have to be coding, um, you know, fin for your scale, yourself, no multiple choice, um, coding the scenarios, um, with, and using um, about 110 codes throughout those 10 questions. So once again, very, very big beast of an exam. Um, and there's just, I'm sorry, I mean, unless again, you are a complete inpatient coder right now and have been for many years, do you have a shot at passing this board exam without an actual course? Um, so um, I do like the, um, that they do let you know on this board exam, you know, how many um, ICD-10 CM and how many ICD-10 PCS uh, codes you will need per case. That's really cool. They didn't have to do that and, and thank you AAPC for doing that. So, um, you know, it's, it's a really, really high level of, um, of, a, of, a, of a credential. Um, and then comes the CCS. Now this is, guys, I'm sorry, but you know, and actually I'm not sorry. I'm going to be unapologetic about it. But um, the CCS is the bomb. <laughs> it is, a, you know, you, AHIM has been around much, much longer than the AAPC. They are extremely well respected. There is, um, not everyone has a CCS. So when you do have a CCS, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty prestigious um, um, type of level um, of, of a coder that you are because, you know, not everybody has a CCS. And, um, you know, this board exam encompasses everything. It's testing you on outpatient coding, inpatient coding, compliance, payment methodologies, um, anatomy, physiology, radiology, um, medical terminal, everything. Everything that I've talked about in this video, it's got it in the CCS board exam. It's not just inpatient coding. Um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's cost is uh, $299. It's one time only. Um, and you get one shot for that $2.99, or if you're a non-member, it'd be $3.99. There's 97 multiple choice type questions um, and eight um, medical case scenarios, give or take. Um, but these scenarios have a ton and ton of coding, and, and these are all located towards the back of the exam. Once again, you'll need a score of 300 out of 400 uh, possible points. Um, you will need books um, such as the ICD-10 PCS, the CPT, the ICD-10 CM, um, and, and no Hicks picks on this one. Um, only, um, there's only a 40% a, a pass rate um, for the CCS. It's a tough cookie. In order to take this, this board exam, um, you know, it's the same exact requirements as the CCSP that you've got to have a RIT or a RIA or a coding program plus two years of coding experience um, or uh, the CCA through AHIMA plus one year of coding experience or a credential from any credential from the AAPC along with one year coding experience. Um, so once again, I'd, I'd hop up on that phone to verify that. Um, and then they're going to test you on, um, you know, above and beyond medical coding, you'll see topics like medical records, um, in-depth medical record questions, release of information, a lot of PHI, um, you know, protective health information, a lot of clinical data questions, access controls, data structure, um, compliance, the list goes on, guys. You need an, an official course for this to, to have a, 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 you know, a chance at passing this board exam. Please don't call me for the CCS coding credential until after you have been doing outpatient medical coding in the, in the industry 
applying codes and having access to all these resources that are going to make you such a really um, amazing, well-rounded corner coder above and beyond what you are as soon as you finish taking an outpatient coding course, you know, uh, the CPC, the COC, the CPMA. Um, there are just these resources that you get um, exposure to in the industry that you don't get any exposure to until you go into an actual workplace. And the bigger thing is you've got to have a massive amount of payer knowledge, um, insurance company payer knowledge. You know, how, how do all these companies, um, insurance companies work? What are their policies? What are their regulations? How do they see these, these coding scenarios? What do they want? How do we pay, get them paid at the highest um, level of reimbursement? So once you've got all that under your belt, then I'll take you on. Um, and after two years of that, outpatient, I'll take you on for the CCS um, credential. The reason I say that is because, um, you know, I, there was this there was these two girls that begged me last year, early in the year, can I please teach them the CCS? And I didn't feel good about it because they were brand new baby coders. They were just barely CPCs, and now they wanted the CCS. And I said, guys, I don't think that you this is going to do. This is not going to be a good course for you, a transition for you, um, because I can teach you and prep you to get to to to. Um, how to pass that CCS board exam, and I can get to the, I can even get the CCS back behind your name. But what I can't do um, is teach you from the ground up. Um, you know, so what I am good at is getting you to pass that CCS board exam, but I'm not good at raising you from baby coder to, to advanced coder in an inpatient scenario. Um, so I, I I let the girls talk me into you know giving them this course, and um, at the end of the, at the end of the day. Um, so it was two young ladies. The, the, they both got hired as CCS is no problem, but um, it's like they sat the first girl down and they said, here you go, here's your cubicle, here's your computer, here's your, your resources, and here's you 120 charts, and uh, please have those done by 5 o'clock. And it was like the girl just sat there, like what? And so there was no hand holding. There was no, you know, here let me let me answer any of your questions. There was real, and they did train her on the software, but that was it. Um, and and it was just whoa, wait, you know. And so the young lady ended up getting put um, on a a ninety day probation. And had she not happened to have met an angel in her company, in her hospital, um, that really took her under her wings, she'd have been let go, okay? And that's just all there is to it because that's how badly um, she was doing in this in this workplace of hers. Of course you're going to do that badly when you know, when you, all you've proven is that you've passed a board exam. You can make it as an outpatient coder, guys, because it the coding itself is doable, Inpatient is a whole nother level. It's a it's a higher level of respect for these coders because it's not always doable. It takes some mastery. <laughs> You're not coding what the patient walked in the door for first. You know, like we are in the outpatient patient coding uh, uh, um, in environment. So, um, you know, I have many reasons, and I'm very convicted about my reasons. Uh, the second young girl um, that, that also attained the CCS, she was ultimately fired within um, 60 days. So again, I am not trying to take your money and get you this big fat CCS when I know for sure you're going to go out in the industry and fall on your face. Um, I'm not about that. My whole thing is to teach you so that you can have these amazing um, opportunities and career paths. And if I find out that you didn't get the job or that you got fired from the job, then I'm not going to do what I'm doing, right? I mean, that's all there is to it. So um, this is why I'm very, very, very strict with who I take on as 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 a, as um, to educate you for the CCS. I think that if you guys have, um, if you find someone out there that does teach you from the ground up in patient coding, I think you should jump on it. I will say without naming any names because that's just unprofessional that I bought um, two online courses. Um, no, three as a matter of fact. Yeah, I'm not going to name any names. Um, although I'm dying to, but anyway, um, um, I bought three online courses. I think it totaled to about $4,700, um, to learn, to be prepped for the CCS and guys, it was just not 
not a good investment at all. It was like they were reading me the book. I could have done that on myself by myself. Or it was maybe a lesson plan, and then and then it was, hey, go to go do these questions, and then and then you were like, but how do I do them? Because you know the lesson plan didn't go into that. So it was just a, a disaster. So really, really do some major, um, you know, inpatient um, coding research before you sign up with somebody on that um, and or, um, you know, wait for me or, or wait for to come to the academy because you will pass after my course, but not after I know that you've been an outpatient coder, um, you know, where I know that you won't go and get fired. Um, so the other thing I will say about that before I leave this topic is that a lot of outpatient coders come in and they have the CCS on their heart, but they start with the CPC or the CCSP. And the next thing you know, they never call me back for, for transitioning. They're like, no, 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 I, no, Mr. Tega, I'm going to stay outpatient. I'm now going to get the COC and the CPMA and the CRC. You know, they never, what happened? I thought you wanted to do inpatient. And what happens, guys, is that you never, um, you never have to because you're making so much income. It's, I mean, once you, especially once you take this stuff home and you're coding from the house as a remote coder, you know, you get two, three providers under your belt, you're already in the six figures. I mean, it's you can open up a billing company. So it is, you know, it, there's a lot of people just saying forget inpatient altogether. Outpatient gets me, you know, an amazing paycheck like I never thought. So, you know, I, I wanted to share that with you while it was on my mind. Um, so um, getting back to the credentials, we're almost done here. The other credentials that Medical Coding Academy anyway um, is, is prepping for is the CRC, and that's the Certified Risk Adjuster Certification. Um, it is one hot tamale of a credential, guys. This one here, um, you know, I would say about 40% of the exam is ICD-10-CM coding. Um, and that covers about 60 questions of it. Um, and everything else are those topics like compliance and risk risk adjustment, um, the different types of risk adjustment models, um, the documentation improvement um, uh, subject matters, um, compliance and record review auditing, um, pathophysiology, um, quality care, um, HEDIS, you name it. It's The list goes on again. Um, so it's, um, this is your, the books that you're, uh, you're going to need are the IECD-10-CM um, and that's it. No CPT, no Hicks picks, no PCS, just one book. <laughs> so um, these are for my people that fall in love with IECD 10 CM. Um, you know the 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 focus on this profession, guys, is is that of chronic illnesses, coding chronic illnesses, um, chronic conditions. Uh, you know, in this day. Um, 30% of the population today have some, are, they're basically on some sort of risk adjustment type of plan. That's huge. 30% is humongous. Um, and it's only getting bigger. So I know it's already spread into Medicaid and, and sort of spreading into the other TPPs, the other third party payers. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's going to take over. Um, and uh, it's, it's, these are, these are basically coders who specialize in risk adjust adjusting, risk adjustments. Um, they're, they're called in the industry risk adjusters, um, but they, you know, they typically not always, but they typically work um, at the health plan. Um, you know, these are the payers that are these these payers, these health plans or insurance companies. They're being paid, um, or I should say, better word, incentivized to offer coverage by adjusting um, the reimbursements to help pay for all the chronic illnesses that a particular patient may have. It's not your normal coding, like you and I were used to coding with a patient, um, what, what, the, you know, what happened today, today's situation or yesterday's situation. This is more so reviewing the entire medical chart. Um, this could be 30 pages, you know, a thousand pages long, um, but it's, it's, you're looking at most, mostly last year's. Um, you're looking at the record via the entire year. Um, so it's a very specialized type of coding, um, and uh, it's, it's really, really neat and fun. You, you do have to have a passion for ICD-10-CM. Um, and, and I would say you also should have a passion of hating CPT, you know, because I, I, I love this, but then I don't love it because I don't like to not be a well-rounded coder. I like to know all, um, 
all types of coating. So um, anyway, but either way it goes, the CRC is huge on the market. You're looking at job descriptions, you're, you're uh, rolling down to the requirements, scrolling down the requirements, and it'll say CRC a lot out there right now. Um, so, you know, while the claim analysts um, are determining medical necessity on our claims that we're sending in on a daily basis, the adjuster sitting over at the insurance company, they're deciding which documentation or codes to submit over to Medicare. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sector of Medicare called Medicare Part C or Medicare Advantage um, in order to have them determine the actual payment. So it, it's, it's really neat, a ton to learn. Um, and, 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 and Medical Coding Academy is, is just now rolling out these two prep courses, CRC and CIC, are brand new with us um, coming, I, I believe, either mid-April or mid-May. Beyond that, um, there are, AAPC offers these wonderful um, specialty credentials and um, I love them. I love teaching them. I have a huge passion for, for teaching these specialty credentials. Um, but they, they consist of, well, first and foremost, let me play, place a disclaimer. I wouldn't go after a specialty credential unless I actually ended up falling in love with a particular specialty. I mean, you are just decided that all you're going to code is cardiovascular or, you know, dermatology or, you know, um, bones and muscles or, you know, you know, but very, you, you have to be willing and ready to say, all I'm ever going to do in this lifetime of mine is code for nothing but anesthesiologist, you know, um, and, and, and it's a great decision to make because again, uh, you know, it goes back to once you go home, once you take your work home, let's say you code for one anesthesiologist, then you go home and, and now you, um, uh, because of, of the flexibility on your end, you're able to get another anesthesiologist under your belt and yet one more, three anesthesiology uh, anesthesiologists under your belt coding from home, it is crazy money, okay? Or cardiovascular or neuro, neurosurgery, whatever, any of those specialties. Um, but you know, there's this um, the anest there's this credential, these weird letters that we're not we're not we don't typically hear of. Um, the anesthesia, I believe, is a is a CANPC. The cardio the cardiology credential is the CCC. The dermatology is the CPCD. Um, the orthopedic one is COSC. The ENM one is CEMC. I hope I'm saying those right. I can get them confused sometimes. And then the emergency department, CEDC. The list goes on. There's there's all these specialties. Um, um, don't call me for the OB/GYN one. Okay, that's the only one that I am not secure about. I I, I can handle the CPT portion. It's the ICD-10 CM that really can throw me for a loop sometimes. And so I don't I don't trust myself for that course with you. Um, but any other one, let me let, let her rip tighter chip because I am ready. I've got it covered. I know every code on every other spe specialty, um, not not OB Gen. Okay, um, and so um, the CPC course, guys, is the three day course. Um, but everything else, every other course with medical coding is a one day course. You say why? How can you cover that much material? Because it's just you and me. That's why. It's always just one me and one person, or me and two people. The most I've ever had in a, in a specialty type of course is four people, and I can handle you. All right, so when you're that little, when you're that small of an audience. Um, now, I could never pull off a course like that in three days, I mean, in, in one day, if you were a big class like my 15 that I usually get um, in a CPC course, okay? That, that's different. So with the AAPC, um, you say, you say, Mr. Tega, after, if I, if I decide that I'm going to be an AAPC person, not an AHEMA person, I'm going to go with the AAPC, then in what order should I take everything? I'm going to recommend that everybody start out with the CPC uh, coding credential or CCSP, one or the other. Those are our, the standard uh, coding credentials, the ones that get you the job in the industry. Uh, and then, as you see on these slides here, um, I'm showing you that you are able to just mix and match. Once you've got that CPC or CCSP, you can tell from this slide that you can go right into a COC or right into a C CRC. Um, you can even do CPC, COC, C CPMA. Uh, so, you know, study this slide and maybe even take notes 
and you make the decision after you've researched this these credentials uh, what order you'd like to go to but once again I will emphasize you are to start with either the CPC or CCSP CPC is through AAPC and CCSP is through AHIMA it's time for some awesome news. Medical Coding Academy has revamped the current three-day curriculum to prepare you for either the CPC through AAPC or CCSP credential with AHIMA with the current three-day schedule that's being reflected on the website. That's right, after the three-day CPC CCSP course, you may sit for either credential. I do want to clarify that these credentials are equivalent to each other. This means they are both physician-based coding credentials. And this is why it is key to decide if you want to take the AHIMA path or AAPC path towards your medical coding career. Please visit the website to find out the nearest location where instructors Mr. Jarius and myself are traveling to next. Hi, my name is Macy Vegas. I took a three-day course for CPC and in Dallas, Texas. And I just want to let you know that this is real. I would definitely encourage everyone to take it. If you think, oh, it's three-day quarters, there's no way. I was like that too, but then I was like, you know what, I'm going to suck it up and see, give her um, a chance. I watch her YouTube videos. She seems legit. I mean, you actually know who she is. Um, please do your homework <laughs> or she will yell at you, but that's okay. I like her. I like that she's really passionate and she really literally cares. So. Trust me, trust the program, believe in her, and listen to what she says, because you will, you'll do a great job, and you'll like her, and you'll make friends here, too. <laughs>